Stage 3, An Unfolding Epidemic, The Grip of Drug Addiction the affliction plaguing our anthill has hitherto unfolded discreetly, discernible only to a specialized myrmecologist. Beneath the dome, alongside their own progeny, the ants nurtured the larvae of Lomus, a future peril recognized as foreign, yet irresistible due to the narcotic substance secreted by the larvae. Lomacusa in action, ants under the influence, unaware of the impending demise of their colony. Now, even to an untrained eye, a discernible anomaly manifests upon scrutinizing the anthill's dome. Relative to other colonies, its vitality appears stunted. Ants exhibit diminished activity, the patrol zone of the nest contracts, territorial loss, and even among the foragers still engaged in work, a peculiar scene unfolds, an ant attempts a task, only to abandon it and aimlessly wander, appearing disoriented. At first glance, one might surmise that they are all under the influence. However, those affected by the drug secreted by Lomacusa tend to remain within the anthill. The lethargic individuals observed on the surface represent a new generation of ants, scientifically termed pseudorgates. Structurally resembling working individuals, their thoracic portion is slightly enlarged compared to a healthy counterpart. Essentially, pseudorgates are incapable of laying eggs or engaging in mating with males. They are unable to fulfill the roles of a fully functional worker ant. Despite their attempts at labor, pseudorgates prove inept fueled partly by the diminishing number of active ants within the nest, many of whom are succumbing to the influence of the substance secreted by the drag dealer, Beetle. Concurrently, these antisocial ants share equal access to nourishment with their cohorts. Consequently, the equilibrium between expenditure and income within the anthill budget is disrupted, leading to a shortage of sustenance for all, the queen, lomus, pseudorgates, and dwindling numbers of healthy ants. Initial theories among myrmecologists suggested that the appearance of pseudorgates was linked to insufficient larvae feeding, given that a significant portion of the ant's food was diverted to Lomecus. An alternative hypothesis implicated pseudorgates as a consequence of a virus transmitted by drag dealer beetles. However, subsequent scientific investigations determined that the emergence of pseudorgates results from the same narcotic substance secreted by Lomecus. In essence, our anthill has transitioned from drug addiction to a stage characterized by a drug addiction epidemic, dictating not only the behavioral patterns of the ants but also altering their physiological structure. Stage 4. External Intervention – Rehabilitation The degradation of our anthill intensifies with each passing day, propelled by the narcotic substance secreted by Lomechus parasitic beetles, which has given rise to pseudorgates. Ants unable to engage in procreation or active socially beneficial activities. The increasing presence of Lomechus and pseudorgates within the anthill upsets the delicate balance between providers and consumers, leading to a dwindling food supply. The degradation process teeters on the brink of irreversibility. If our anthill were more populous, the encroachment of drag dealer beetles would unfold gradually over many years. However, Due to its modest size, external intervention, cleansing, is the sole lifeline. Time is of the essence. Cleansing the anthill of Lomechus is only feasible before the pseudorgates reproduce extensively. For this task, two containers, ordinary buckets with tight lids will suffice, a large piece of polyethylene measuring 1.5 by 1.5 meters, rubber gloves, and a spatula are essential. Identifying the healthiest sector of the anthill, we excise it with a spatula much like a slice of pie, swiftly placing it into a bucket along with ants, larvae, eggs, and nesting material, securely sealing the lid. The bucket's contents are then poured onto the polyethylene in small portions and meticulously sifted through. Similar to sorting grains for porridge, healthy ants and nesting material are transferred from one pile to another. Drag dealer, beetles, and incurably afflicted pseudorgates are captured, crushed, and discarded. Each clean portion of the anthill is promptly transferred to the second bucket. Distinguishing Lomechus is straightforward. They differ significantly from ants in size, two to three times smaller, and boast a distinct bright brown color. Identifying pseudorgates proves trickier, as they closely resemble healthy ants. However, their behavior betrays them. Healthy individuals promptly resume their roles, while pseudorgates linger idly. The entire cleaning procedure consumes slightly more than an hour. Deceased Lomechus and pseudorgates are collected in a faceted glass for scientific purposes. Although we encounter a lone female queen during cleaning, even if others remain in the infected nest, concerns are assuaged since August marks the swarming season for ants. 
Winged females and males emerge, actively mating in the air, ensuring an ample supply of fertilized females. Now, the task at hand is to find a suitable location for the revitalized anthill. For those left in the Lomacusa affected nest, there is no external assistance forthcoming. Stage 5. Rebirth of the anthill. The preliminary phases of the experiment conclusively demonstrated that an anthill afflicted by Lomecus, drag dealer beetles, who parasitize using a narcotic substance secreted by them, is inevitably destined for demise. The only recourse for salvation lies in a meticulous cleaning process, manually removing Lomus and the irreversibly afflicted ants known as Sidorgates. Regrettably, our anthill was so deeply entrenched in the throes of the drug addiction epidemic that only a portion of the nest could be salvaged. The rescued individuals now reside in a bucket securely sealed with a lid. The next crucial step involves locating a suitable environment where the rescued ants can acclimate and establish a new nest. Given the red forest ants' affinity for moisture, forest peripheries and meadows are ideal candidates. Optimal conditions involve selecting a forest location with similar composition to the previous anthill's habitat. A critical stipulation is that the distance from the original nest should exceed one kilometer. Otherwise, the healthy ants might inadvertently return to the decaying anthill, nullifying any chances of survival. Proximity to other nests, even if unaffected by Lomus, is also discouraged, as their inhabitants may display hostility towards newcomers, potentially looting the nascent anthill. Certain wood slave ant species are known to pilfer larvae from neighboring nests and subsequently rear them as slaves. After thorough consideration, we identified an ideal spot nestled in a Christmas tree adjacent to a small decaying stump. With careful precision, we empty the contents of the bucket, and the ants promptly commence their settlement in the new location. The queen and nesting ants excavate holes in the ground, some individuals deposit larvae and eggs, others gather nesting material, and a fourth group undertakes patrolling duties. Excavated soil is repurposed to construct a rampart surrounding the nascent nest, an architectural trade observed in all red forest ant settlements bearing a striking resemblance to human cities. To expedite construction, scattering leaves, twigs, and sawdust along the perimeter prompts the ants to swiftly incorporate them into their building endeavors. In contrast to the natural progression, our anthill confronts more challenging circumstances during construction. Typically, a family establishing a new nest maintains a connection with the mother's nest, receiving support and assistance for an extended period. Nevertheless, even in complete isolation, our anthill undergoes a revival, reclaiming its familiar contours by the third day. Within another three days, the dome extends to 15 centimeters, and after a week, our anthill mirrors its former self. As for our initial anthill affected by Lomahosa, two weeks later, we discover a grass-covered mound in its place. Without ants to sort through nest material, the dome ceases ventilation and initiates decay. In the newfound location, the dome expands by an additional five centimeters. This anthill is now impervious to the threat of drag dealer beetles. A long-established fact in the realm of ant science, myrmycology, reveals an intriguing observation. An anthill cleared of Lomechus develops immunity against their narcotic substance. The precise mechanism behind this immunity remains unknown to scientists, but the phenomenon holds true. Additionally, it is noteworthy to mention that the ant's development of immunity to drugs, consequently rendering it impervious to the parasitic Lomechusa, can be attributed to the phenomenon of collective learning. Following the anthill's encounter with the brink of clinical death, the knowledge of the concealed adversary and its toxic effects becomes indelibly etched in the collective memory of the ant community. This scenario exemplifies how the community's triumph over an acute and lethal crisis propels it to an elevated stage of development, unveiling novel evolutionary possibilities. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching.